Welcome everybody. My name is David Bush, and I am your moderator for today's presentation. And you know, over the last uh, six or seven years, we've brought to you some of the most game-changing webinars that the mortgage industry has had to offer. And we're not going to disappoint you tonight or today, this afternoon, no matter where you are, whether you're on the East Coast or the West Coast, we've got quite a few people that are on the webinar today. And we're just excited to be able to talk to you more about the strategies and concepts behind how to find and fund more of the Fannie Mae HARP loans. And so I've got two expert panelists with me today. We're going to talk about very specific objectives. And the three objectives that we're going to try to cover in the next 30 minutes is, number one, how to identify and market the Fannie Mae owned mortgages. How do you do it the most efficient, the fastest, uh, most profitable way. We're going to talk about the best practices and marketing strategies that some of the top lenders in the country are using uh, to get people to call in, to, to respond to the marketing strategies, and to be able to fill the funnel um, with an overflow of pipeline leads. And then we've got one of the nation's top experts on HARP loans who's going to talk a little bit more about guidelines uh, for qualifying and just you know the specifics behind the HARP uh, product so that you understand it in more detail. You can facilitate it, you can become an expert on it so that you can close more transactions. And that's what we're going to try to cover in a very quick pace. And so the first panelist that I'm going to bring on is, uh, is Jeff Bush. And Jeff is the president of OverflowWorks.com, a uh, marketing uh, uh, brain center. It's, it's one of the top elite programs out there that is being able to identify and bring you the very best quality data so that you can be able to provide the best types of services and loans to that individual data. He's got 18 years of direct marketing experience. He's got, get this guys, over a billion, a billion with a B, direct mail pieces mail for the mortgage industry. He's been uh, one of the instrumental leaders for people like their own organizations like eLoan, Ditech, LendingTree. Uh, he was their uh, marketing brainchild responsible for some of their most effective campaigns. And then he decided to go out there and open up his own mortgage company. His mortgage banking company closed over 5,000 loans, over $1.7 billion in just a few years, leveraging direct mail as his primary lead generation tactic. This guy is the ultimate guru. He's the guy that stays up late at night and gets up early in the morning to analyze data and trigger sets to be able to find the types of people that need, want, uh, and deserve your services. And so he's going to give us the understanding about how to take advantage of this opportunity with a new HARP loan product. And so, Jeff, welcome to the call. Thanks for having me, Dave. Appreciate it. Well, let's jump right into this, and let's talk a little bit more about the, uh, the data set on how you were able to take your background and being able to um, pull together these different variables to, to be able to isolate out the people that you know, qualify for this new HARP loan. And then let's go into details about maybe how they can take advantage of that. Sure. So we talk about niches to riches in the mortgage industry. I mean, we've got to have a hot product in order to have marketing that works and make our phones ring to make money. And the mortgage business has been a little slow on product the last few years, so we haven't had a lot of exciting things to, to market. But when the Fannie Mae HARP 2.0 was announced, I, I just looked at it and said, hey, there's, you know, millions of Fannie Mae owned mortgages that can take advantage of this refi and the low rates and we can really help the economy lower these people's payments. So we went out and built a mailing list of 100% guaranteed Fannie Mae owned mortgages. And I can't go into all the details how we, how we did that, but we just 100% guarantee the data that Fannie currently owns the mortgage. And we're looking at marketing to loan amounts 150000 to 417000 That's typically what Fannie Mae was buying uh, prior to 2009. We're looking at loan dates, people that got their first mortgages between April of 2004 and April of 2009, uh, you know, meeting the Fannie Mae guidelines being that they have to have sold the loan to Fannie Mae. I believe it's by May or June of 2009. Uh, we have addresses and phone numbers, and we put it through the DNC, the Do Not Call Registry, so that you're not calling anyone that you're not supposed to. So we can mail to them, we can call them. And Dave, this is an actual sample of Fannie Mae on mortgages in a little city called Alpine in, in San Diego, California, San Diego County. Uh, these are really Fannie Mae owned mortgages. We show their LTV, the lender name, the loan amount, and when the first mortgage recorded. So we've got hundreds of thousands of, of these types of records that we can mail to and call. So give you kind of a bird's eye view of what we're doing here. Yeah, well, I'm going to throw a poll up really quick just because I'm curious to know who we have on the call today to talk a little bit more about their background and expertise on this particular product. But, you know, Jeff, talk a little bit about the, the trends because, 
you know, you hit it out of the park in the refi craze back in uh, in the in the early 2000s. I mean, you, you absolutely nailed it with some of your marketing campaigns. And then you were able to take and, and really together an awesome marketing campaign for loan modification. And then now it's, it's taken a while before this next product, this you know, game-changing type of product like HARP has come out so that you could be able to identify it out of head. But talk to the people that are on the web today just about the importance of why they should really focus and leverage on this niche and get after it versus waiting until all their competitors get on. Well, the only thing constant in the mortgage business is change, right? I mean, we're always changing in products and markets and, you know, equity, no equity. I mean, I, I was in this business like some people on this call when the 125s were really popular back in the 90s. I mean, we were marketing people that wanted to take out 125% of their equity to pay off credit card debt. And I did millions of pieces for the second mortgages. So it's amazing how the products just keep changing, but it just keeps coming back around. I'm sure everybody on the phone has been getting phone calls from past borrowers that they funded loans for that want to refinance and can't. They're upside down equity-wise. Or they did their Fannie Mae on mortgage after April of 2009, which is kind of a, a bummer that we're not able to help those people yet. Hopefully they open that up later. Uh, but we've just identified a key group of people that can benefit from a refinance you know, and, and lower payments, and we can get some loans funded. So that's kind of an overall view of it. Right. Well, I'm going to close up this poll here, so if you haven't voted yet, come back to your computer and cast your vote, and I'll close this, and I'll be able to share this with our panelists today so they can speak to the specific needs of those people that are on the call. Because, you know, we have two major groups on this call. We've got the ones that are already engaged in doing it, and they're looking for marketing strategies, and then we've got the ones that are, you know, interested in doing it and want the marketing strategies and the understanding of how it all works. And so go ahead and cast your votes, and I'll close the poll up in five seconds. Five four, three, two, one, get your vote in. All right, thanks everybody, I appreciate you participating. So uh, guys, this is this is the group right here. Uh, this is what we've got. We've got 30% uh, of the attendees are very familiar with the guidelines, but there's still quite a few people on the call that are uh, not completely familiar. So make sure that you tailor your responses and your answers to the, uh, the wide variety of audience members that we have. So let's talk a little bit more about uh, accounts for large counties because there's quite a bit of data out there. But I mean, is it limited, Jeff, or does it, I mean, what, what do we have in regards to an opportunity and a window here? Well, I believe that Fannie Mae is saying that with these new guidelines, there's going to be a million people that refi in the next 12 months on the Fannie 2.0. So how many of those million loans does your you know mortgage company want to do? You want to do an extra hundred this year, an extra thousand, ten thousand? I mean, that's that's a lot of loans. So what I'm showing, what we're showing on the screen here, is some counts for just some big counties around the country, and it's I think it's alphabetical by state and then maybe by county. Um, I'll just show you, like in Los Angeles, California, we pull up 225,000 mortgages that are between 150 and 417 that funded prior to April of 09. Uh, that's the total number of mortgages. And then the total number of mortgages where we have a phone number available, not on the do not call list, is only 21,000. But then if you go to the other two columns, that's the estimated Fannie Mae owned list. I mean, there's only 56,000 people in all of LA that can, that can benefit from this. And 5,400 people that have a phone number, not on the do not call list, that you can actually call. So it's you know, 56,000 loans in LA, it's a pretty big number, but not when you're looking at 22 million people that live there. So you can see this data is really targeted, especially if you get into calling these people. The phone number data is just so small in the country because of the do not call list. So this gives you an idea of the size of the market. We've got Maricopa County, Arizona, which is the Phoenix market. You know, uh, Riverside, California, where we're located is, is a hard hit market where a lot of people are upside down on their mortgages. Um, you know, Broward County, Florida, that's South Florida, like I believe Miami, Fort Lauderdale area. And there's a bunch of people down there that need help uh, upside down on their mortgages, Fannie Mae own. So this is the data, and we have this data, you know, available for the whole country. So, well, let's talk a little bit more about marketing pieces because I know that you have, you know, a couple of different options where you can plug people into the data, or you could get them to, you know, get their phones ringing off the hook. I mean, talk a little bit more about this sample letter, but walk through this letter and, and why it's been so successful for you. 
Okay, so real quickly, this is a real live letter. We've got at the top of the letter, you know, 7,000 Connecticut, the abbreviation for Connecticut, mortgage holders should qualify for the new HARP. And then we have the lender that funded this loan, which happens to be People's Bank, showing through the window in the envelope. And Jorge Santa Cruz, living in Stanford, Connecticut, happens to have a loan owned by Fannie Mae, so he's on our mailing list. He has a loan amount of $200,000, so we personalized the letter with his loan amount. And we're saying, hey, you can refinance even if you're upside down in your home. Take advantage of these low rates, 3.75, rate APR 3.91. You know, Obama, home affordable, have your payments lowered, even if you owe more than your home's worth. Um, we can save you money, so call this phone number. So, you know, we mailed out like, I think, 5,000 letters in Fairfield County, Connecticut for a client. And I believe they had 51 incoming phone calls, okay, this is the first half of the mailing, 2,500 mailers that went out, they had 37 phone calls, submitted 11 loans. Um, so I think our average loan amount was like in the mid 200s and they were making about a point and a half on their loans. So this shows they brought in 39,000 in revenue for a $3,700 investment on the mailing, so over 10 times ROI. So this is um, a real life campaign that, that happened in that area. So. Well, you've had some other case studies and, and walk through, you know, a couple of a couple of these different case studies so you can give them kind of a feel.